Welcome back to the Junius Maltby channel. Thanks for joining us today as we go back in time to the Roman Empire to hopefully glean a lesson from their mistakes which caused their civilization to eventually be wiped from the earth. Uh, we've covered this on the channel in the past. There are videos in the archives you can go back and find here on the channel uh, of this very topic. Today we're going to take some images from two articles that are on the Visual Capitalist, great site, put up lots of good visuals and information, but we're going to use them as a background for our discussion on this topic in a little bit more detail today. So we're going to kind of merge the two articles because they kind of go hand in hand. One is uh, on the Roman currency debasement, which ties right into currency and the collapse of Rome. And the other one also talks about uh, some of the emperors that were very influential in debasing their currency. And we're going to walk through very quickly here, unscripted, extemporaneous walk through Roman history and talk about, you know, what we could learn from this and try to pay attention to some of the little details and things that uh, we mirror. I wouldn't say they mirror us because it's like we're mirroring their civilization. There's a lot of similarities and uh, things that you could out almost say we, we pattern ourselves directly off of the way they managed their civilization, their empire. I might be speaking more direct to the United States uh, in many parts of this video because it, it is almost as if we are an empire. And when, if you look at uh, our footprint on the globe, our far-reaching influence all around the world, our foreign aid, our military endeavors, and so on. So let's move along here. Currency and the collapse of the Roman Empire. Roman currency debasement plotted versus the cause of death for Roman emperors. Now the Roman Empire at its peak held up to 130 million people over a span of 1.5 million square miles. In red you can see the Roman Empire at around 117 AD. Many of us in school are familiar with this map. The the overall pattern of the Roman Empire spreading across the old world there in Europe. Rome had conquered much of the known world. The empire built 50,000 miles of roads, as well as many aqueducts, amphitheaters, and other works that are still in use today. Today our alphabet, calendar, languages, literature, and architecture borrow much from the Romans. Even concepts of Roman justice still stand tall, such as being innocent until proven guilty. How could such a powerful empire collapse? Uh, look at just Washington, D.C., our architecture. It looks like a mini Rome in, in many aspects. The Roman economy. Trade was vital to Rome. It was trade that allowed a wide variety of goods to be imported into its borders. Grain, beef, and olive oil, glassware, wine, spices, and silks, iron, silver, and lead, marble, timber, tin, now you look at the, the how important, how vital trade is with even modern economies to this very day. Uh, the United States, trade is, is always talked about. It's talked about in the presidential debates. It's talked about on CNBC, on any financial news network, all the time. Trade is a major part of any civilization's economy. In 200 AD, trade in the Roman Empire, here you go. You can see the routes there, goods traded. Uh, you can see the main trade routes, the slave trade routes. And I would even argue that there is almost a form of slavery today if you look at cheap labor. So here you go, you've got the trade routes throughout Rome, uh, reaching the far reaches of the empire. And uh, you don't, they also made it eventually, as you know, into Britain, southern Britain there. And uh, just a, a far reaching empire. Now, now the trade generated vast wealth for the citizens of Rome. Just as here in the United States, the citizens have benefited with, uh, with a strong economy uh, from years of productivity and policies dating back to the founding of the country, really. You know, we, it was an industrious nation. Uh, we went through the Industrial Revolution, and there was a lot of uh, events that took place that led to a prosperous United States. And because of that, there was a large middle class was born out of it. Um, I'm still talking about the United States here. But however, in Rome, the, the city of Rome itself only had a million people, and costs kept rising as the empire became larger. 
administrative, logistical, and military costs kept adding up. And the empire found creative new ways to pay for things. Pay attention to these words now. Creative new ways to pay for things. Uh, military costs. You know, it's expensive to have an empire. You've got to defend all those borders and all of your interests. All of your interests. Remember that too. Along with other factors, this led to hyperinflation, a fractured economy, localization of trade, heavy taxes, and a financial crisis that crippled Rome. Some key words there that should ring true and stimulate some thoughts in us as well here in the year 2016. Roman debasement. Now, here's where I inject the other article into the main article of currency and the collapse of the Roman Empire. Now, this is the major silver coin used during the first 220 years of the Roman Empire. It was the denarius. We've talked about this coin. I've shown you guys a denarius here on the channel before, a real one. It's a really nice coin to have in any collection. This coin, between the size of a modern nickel and dime, was worth approximately a day's wages for a skilled laborer or craftsman. During the first days of the empire, these coins were of high purity, holding about 4.5 grams of pure silver. So for those of you silver enthusiasts on the channel, think of that for a moment. 4.5 grams of pure silver was worth a day's wages. That should lend to some of your guys' arguments that silver should be worth more than it is. Am I right? A day's wages, so that's, that's pretty good, pretty good amount of value in just a small amount of silver. However, with a finite supply of silver and gold entering the empire, Roman spending was limited by the amount of denarii that could be minted. And the Roman Empire, 27 BC to 476 AD, was ruled by many different emperors until its collapse. Some emperors, such as Augustus Caesar, ruled for decades. Others were not so lucky. They were murdered mere months after taking the throne. The visualization below compares the causes of death of Roman emperors, the dots, against the weight of silver in Roman currency, the chart. Here's a very interesting chart. You could spend almost the entire video just on this chart alone and discussing it. Early emperors left the silver content of the denarius at about 3.9 grams. You can see there on the left side, there's a picture of the denarius and then the gram weight, grams of silver per coin. And the chart shows that for years, from about 25 BC, all the way to almost 60 or 65 AD, uh, the denarius had a very consistent weight, and up close towards that 4 grams. And then it begins to precipitously fall off. And during, uh, you can see there, during the, that tumultuous period highlighted there in the middle of the chart, uh, this is a period in which emperors had an 84% chance of being killed. Uh, very violent, turbulent times for the Roman Empire, right there between about 175 A.D. and about 300 A.D. A lot of emperors killed, and uh, so this chart comes from the article that really links some of that uh, tumultuous times to the economic instability and things that emperors did to really help ruin and accelerate the decline and decay of the Roman Empire. But you can see there... As these tumultuous times took place and there was infighting and disagreement and assassinations, uh, the silver content of the, of the denarius plummeted, plummeted from 2.7 grams to, to almost nothing. They, they would get, it got to the point, and you, and you guys should be familiar with this if you've been on the channel for a while, we've mentioned it in the past and talked about this on the other Roman uh, videos, it would just be a bronze coin coated. In silver, very thin layer of, co of silver as they dip the bronze coins in them, essentially. So, there you go. They, they just completely watered down the currency, inflated it, and similar to today's fiat. As we stay with this, this other article for just a moment, we're going to look closely at five emperors and their effects and why they stand out in this article. Here's number one, Emperor Nero. Nero reduced the standard of the denarius from 3.3 grams to help finance the rebuilding of Rome after a major fire. Successive emperors would slowly reduce the silver content of the Roman currency. 
So, of course, it's a slippery slope. Once one guy does it, it becomes easier for the next and easier for the next. And pretty soon, it's not worth anything anymore. So, you always, you just need to, when something's wrong economically, or when someone's trying to do something to assault a currency economically for, quote unquote, the greater good, such as rebuilding the city after a major fire, you need to stop them then and now because it's a slippery slope. It'll keep going. This is how emperor, empires crumble. This is how civilizations are destroyed. Septimius Severus, in order to maintain his enlarged military, Emperor Severus debased the Roman currency drastically during his reign. Silver content plummeted to 1.82 grams. So now it's about 52% or 50, sorry, 50 or less of its original value. Caracalla, in 215, Caracalla introduced a new silver denomination known as the Antoninianus. This new coin had the same face value as two denarii, but contained 25% less silver. Caracalla also doubled soldiers' salary and expanded citizenship to increase the tax base. The financial health of the empire was in serious trouble. Now, what does that sound like? Okay, They're, they expanded citizenship, you know, letting more people in, expanding the borders, making it easier to qualify to be a citizen in order to increase the tax base. Um, however, a lot of the people weren't paying taxes. I can assure you there was a lot of welfare in the Roman Empire, as you know. Bread and circuses. They were being taken care of by the state. They were given free bread and free entertainment. Aurelian? Aurelian faced a revolt by mint workers as he attempted to reform the system and stem the theft of silver. So that the mint workers are stealing silver. His monetary re reformation included new Antoninii containing 5% silver. 20 of such coins contained the silver quantity of an old silver denarius. But it was still an improvement. Diocletian. Despite Diocletian's effort at reforming the monetary system, i.e. restoring three metal coinage, the empire suffered triple-digit inflation in some years. At this point, silver coins were primarily copper and had only a thin silver plating if they contained any silver at all. This made financing the pet projects of emperors challenging. How was the newest war, thermi, palace, or circus to be paid for? Roman officials found a way to work around this. As we just discussed, now we're back to the, the other article. By decreasing the period of their coinage, they were able to make more silver coins with the same face value. This is the same thing as fiat, ladies and gentlemen. This is the earliest form, the earliest style of inflation, and what we would call the inflation tax. With more coins in circulation, the government could spend more. And so, the content of silver dropped over the years. Here's another chart showing the silver content of a Roman denarius over a, a particular period of time. Uh, these are from the ones that were just 100% denarius uh, silver down to almost 0%. By the time Marcus Aurelius, the denarius was only about 75% silver. We just talked about what Caracalla did. Uh, he, he tried a different method of debasement. He introduced the double denarius, which was worth twice the denarius in face value. However, it only had uh, the weight of one and a half denarius. Uh, and by the time Gallienus, the coins had barely 5% silver. Each coin was a bronze core with a thin coating of silver. The shine quickly wore off to reveal the poor quality underneath. The consequences. The real effects of debasement took time to materialize. Adding more coins of poor quality into circulation did not help increase prosperity. It just transferred wealth away from the people, and it meant that more coins were needed to pay for goods and services. There you go. Prices go up. Here's another chart. Wages and coinage. At times, there was runaway inflation in the Roman Empire. For example, soldiers demanded far higher wages as the quality of coins diminished. So they knew what the empire was doing to pay for the empire. And they wanted more pay because, obviously... The, their money wasn't going as far and was not buying as much good goods and services as it had in the past. So as the silver content dropped, the soldiers demanded more wages. They demanded higher pay. Uh, now they were probably getting the same pay, 
because yes, the value was dropping, but they were getting more coins for their pay. So they just wanted to stay the same. It's like that cost of living adjustment, we could call it. Inflation adjustment for your pay. Or they always talk about the annual, the percentage rate of inflation, 3%, 4%. We all know it's higher than that here in the United States. But this is pretty much what was going on then. And we should not have any inflation. Here's a quote from Caracalla, who raised soldiers' pay by 50% in 210 AD. He said, nobody should have any money but I, so that I may bestow it upon the soldiers. By 265 AD, when there was only 0.5% silver left in a denarius, prices skyrocketed 1,000% across the Roman Empire. Only barbarian mercenaries were to be paid in gold. The effects, with soaring logistical and administrative costs, and no precious metals left to plunder from enemies, the Romans levied more and more taxes against the people to sustain the empire. Hyperinflation, soaring taxes, and worthless money created a trifecta that dissolved much of Rome's trade. And that's an article we talked about in the past. Um, it covered that in depth, that trade basically froze up. People stopped moving goods and services it just, there was no reason to work, there was no reason to buy or sell or even transport anything. The economy was paralyzed, as I just said, frozen. Uh, by the end of the third century, any trade that was left was mostly local using inefficient barter methods instead of any meaningful medium of exchange. And then there was the collapse. During the crisis of the third century, 235 to 284 AD, there may have been more than 50 emperors most of these were murdered, assassinated, or killed in battle. The empire was in a free-for-all, and it split into three separate states. Barbarian invasions came in from every direction. Plague was rampant. The trade networks were disintegrated, and such activities became too dangerous. Just chaos. As you can see, all the different groups, the, the Visigoths, the Vandals, the Huns, just pouring into Rome taking what they wanted, burning what they wanted. Uh, the empire at this point was it was beyond repair, beyond saving. And as you all know, as history has shown us, eventually it was just completely and utterly destroyed. Coin debasement and inflation helped lead to the demise of the Western Roman Empire, which would cease to exist by 476 AD. So there you go. That is a lesson in and of itself. Uh, as we said in the beginning, those who do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. If you do not learn from history, you will repeat it. And every Western civilization, every Western country at this point, needs to pay attention to that. Thanks for being part of the Junie Smalpy channel.